This episode made me realize that male no muscle takes accountability for anything. Also, Stormy and Destiny are friends, but Destiny, you better tread life at. The people say you either tell us your tea or get the hell up off the show. Y'all ready to talk about it? Try the music! Oh yes, bitches and hoes. I'm back. I drop a play, your life is nothing, it ain't working out Now no debate or fuck discussion, bitch, I'm walking out I'm walking My out. time is money, I ain't loving, let you toss it out Flip my weave and walk it out, look how I just bossed it out Now come on baby, why you bugging, we can't talk it out I keep it moving, I ain't tripping, lost another spouse I'm just a boss, it's in my blood, no, I won't scream or shout Grabbing my keys Cause oh yeah, bitches and hoes, I'm back Back with another video, we here to talk about Love and Marriage Huntsville, uh, Reunion Part 2, fucking Season 5, and I got paper and I got my little laptop, so we gonna make it ghetto like that. Anyway, um, let's just start this thing off. So the episode opens up, Kiki said Tisha thought Marcel was cheating on her before the show. So we find out 14, 12, I don't know how many years ago, uh, Marcel did have a, a picture of a, of, of a naked girl in the phone. So it wasn't her, she wasn't fully naked, it was really her butt. Tisha said she investigated it and didn't find anything. She confronted them about it, and uh, after she investigated, obviously, and she said it, it was nothing of it, they never talked again, it was what it was. Tisha's holding on to the fact that she said after her investigation, she realized there was nothing there. So she ain't leaving her man, she gonna stick beside him. Um, Carlos asked Tisha a real question. He said, so after you found the pic, Hearing all the things you hear now, you don't think that there could be something there? Like, you you really don't believe there could be nothing there. And she don't want to admit that there could be something because she says no. She says she ain't seen nothing. So, um, she always do her research before she confront Marceau. And she said, um, it just wasn't nothing. She ain't find nothing. That's because you didn't want to find nothing. But, um... She said if he would have smashed somebody else, it would be an issue. And uh, even Kiki had to say she's right. Because I guess, I'm telling you, I feel like Tisha be throwing them dogs. Tisha be throwing them hands. Because she said, Muscle, no, if I found out, it would have been something completely different. But that was 14 years ago. Miss Wanda didn't know nothing about it. She said, now she look at Muscle different. Girl, I thought we all looked at Muscle different. Didn't you claim he had a baby? Didn't you come to him about rumors with him having a baby for somebody? Miss Wanda, stop the cap. Um... But she said, you know, Tisha don't be telling her stuff like that. She didn't know nothing about it. Um, but she said that is cheating. If you harm pigs and all of that and talking to other women, that is cheating. You know, I had a guy break up with me because he said I was communicating with other men. And because of that, he, he classified that as cheating. He did. He broke up with me. I was just like, you know, at first I was like, dang, I should have just got him rolled on top of the dude if he was going, you know what I'm saying? But no, nope, some people feel like certain things is cheating. So I get that. Um... Carlos asks uh, Tisha, did she feel blindsided by seeing Kiki filming with Mel? Tisha said something pivotal. She said, Mel, she said, Kiki had already told me that Mel asked her, keywords, asked her to film with her. So she was like, it's fine. She just didn't know Kiki was going to get on there and go to the Christmas party and talk about her. Kiki was like, that's a lie because I told you what we was talking about. She said, no, you told me what they were saying, but you didn't tell me what you were saying. So now... But Kiki maintains that she wouldn't say uh, a picture of Martel, not Martel, a picture of a girl sent to Marceau is not proof. And she's not going to say that she said that, that because that's a lie. Um, What's your name? Kiki, you're a damn lie. When you went to that Christmas party, you said, when they asked you, has Tisha ever been in a position where she thought Marceau was cheating? You said, yeah, you said very matter-of-factly. Now you're backpedaling saying, oh, no, because um, a pic ain't, a, ain't considered cheating or whatever. Girl, stop it. Like, I, I just don't get you, Kiki. You just straddle the fence is what you do. But now, um, that was unseen footage with Kimmy. Uh, basically, because Kimmy was like, I told her not to bring that shit up. Like, I told her this wasn't the space for her. And look at Kiki. Ooh, I hope y'all have the footage. Well, the producers had the footage. And when they rolled the footage back, you was over there dragging for your cousin. And Kimmy was the one who stepped in and said, I don't think this is the space to be talking about your cousin. You need to talk to your cousin your damn self. Kiki, you a damn liar. And not, nobody believes anything you say. Like, they just don't. Like, and it's, it's really annoying the shit out of me. Like, you really just blow me. Um, you don't even stand on your stuff. 
But Kiki coming out of the dog on flashback, maintaining that she didn't start it up, that they were asking her. Girl, look, one thing Kimmy ain't gonna do is lie about nothing crazy like that. Now, if Kimmy said you said it, I'm with Kimmy. Um, Muscle asked a, a question to uh, Mel and Martel. He said, listen, when we came to you and told you about Kiki around here stealing your prescription drugs out your dog on medicine cabinet, was we telling you that in a laughing manner? Mel, of course, we, I'm about to talk about her. Mel said yes, straight up. They asked Martel, and Martel being so scared of saying something against Mel because he feel like she ain't going to give him another chance, he said he don't remember. Mel is bitter, and it's time for Mel to get on up out of here. I'm sorry. And I, it's so funny because I'm conflicted with this. Mel is, on the one side, the show need Mel. But on the other side, if you've grown past this, you don't want to be friends with nobody, you need to go ahead on and move on to other business ventures. They say you ain't, you don't need the money, you ain't strapped for cash. You just seem so uninterested, and I don't like that. And then furthermore, I don't believe personally that Marceau uh, came to y'all laughing and joking, saying that she was stealing, you know, people's stuff out their medicine cabinet. I really don't, especially knowing that he's been there for Kiki. Even Kiki don't believe it. Because she's like, you know, I know how Marceau is. He got his personality or whatever. But I don't believe that's what it was. Well, if that was the case, then why was you so pressed? When Mel brought it to you, Kiki, why were you so pressed? Listen, let me say this. Mel, um has started a lot of stuff. Any Anytime everybody's common denominator beef is male, then y'all got, I know the Mel stands, what she call them, Melanikas, whatever she call y'all. You know, like the Beehive and the Barty Gang and, and, and what's the other one? You know, I'm, I don't fan out on people. So I that's just me. I ain't worshiping no bitch, no nigga. Anyway, but um, y'all can't see nothing wrong that she does. And what she does is wrong because her inviting doggone Kiki to come on this show to doggone say something against Tisha was dirty. It was wrong and it was dirty and you were reaching like a doggone reacher. Sorry, that's just my opinion and I said what I said. Um, Martel, not Martel, Marceau uh, basically says Mel can't keep accountability for nothing because what she doing is dirty. She don't keep accountability. And it, it just, there was an arterial motive behind pulling Kiki up on that show to tell Kiki, girl, they were over there making a joke about you being on, addicted to uh, drugs. I don't think that was right. I, I, I don't think that was right. But Marceau is, is sticking to the fact that he was not laughing when he brought that to them. He really was being informative when he told them. That part, I believe. But Mel, he said he wouldn't joke about that. Mel said, boy, you did the whole first season. I don't know what that meant. But, um... Marceau said he, she, uh, Mel is just trying to turn Kiki against him and Tisha. And they both agreed at that. But uh, Martel, again, he claimed he don't remember shit. Of course he don't. Uh, Maurice said Marceau was there for Kiki when she needed it. So he don't believe that she would do that. That he would do that. Tisha's whole thing is, because uh, I know Kiki feel like it wasn't their business to tell. But Tisha's whole thing is, girl, look, I've always supported you. I've always rooted for you, been there for you. Why would you think I would do something dirty like that for you? We first cousins. We've been around each other our entire lives. You're trying to let Mel get us get between us, and that's just not okay. I, I thought you were better than that. I did, too, and I don't even know y'all like that. Um, now, we moving on. Wanda and Mel, they roll out her package, and we get to talking about this dog on Big Blow Up down there. And Led not, what, I'm about to say Ladon, girl. What's uh, Destiny's business name? It don't even matter, because they say ain't nobody coming around there anyway. But they talk about Mel, not, not Mel, um, in the package it shows how Mel felt like Miss Wanda was speaking on her kids. And they talk, they go through the whole big old fight. Um, and it was all about the DM that she even showed the doggone interview that Mel did on Carlos King where she said, you know, Miss Wanda baby daddy in my DM, wooty wooty woo. The Carlos comes out of package and said that was the most talk about thing this season. He asked Mel what made her approach um Miss Wanda on camera. Mel tried to make it seem like she didn't really approach her on camera. She just was going over there and she just happened to see the man who said he had choppers, chopper city for her. You know what I'm saying? So she went to confront him. First, first of all, let me stop you right there. Why would you confront a man? If you really truly believe that this man was talking about having choppers for you, why would you confront him? Does that sound logical? If let's just go with Mel's story. You wasn't confronting Miss Wanda, you was confronting her cousin. Oh, uh, I don't know, I forgot his name, Robert or whatever it was, because he was online saying he got choppers and he gonna come get you with it. Why would you confront a man who would say that? That doesn't make sense, Mel. You lying. You walked out there on live, 
with your stuff, going out there to confront Miss Wanda. You said it when you was walking out the door. Miss Wanda jumped up and said you a lie and said, no, just what I just said. You came out there on live and you came to confront me. They even had to get you off the live. They, the producers played that back now. Now, Mella stands. Tell me I'm lying. Did you not see the producers play back the doggone clip when Mel came out there on live and they told her to get off the live? You can't be on live while we filming because this, this here film is paid for. You can't, you know, copyright shit or whatever. It's just not the way it is. Um, You came out there with the intention to confront Ms. Wanda. You did. Rather you feel like Ms. Wanda was right or wrong, Mel came out there with the intention to doggone confront Miss Wanda. And you came out there to get your fans on doggone board with it, but you had to get off the live. I remember watching the live, but I only watched it when y'all got back in the car with your mom. Um, Miss Wanda felt like you and your mama came over there to confront me, and that's literally what it was. Wanda comes out of the package saying she never said that, uh, that her cousin never said he was going to put a chopper on her. He just mentioned that he had one. He, it's inappropriate for him talking about women anyway, Miss Wanda. I'm sorry, your ghetto ass family is inappropriate. Ain't so are you sometimes. But, um, Carlos asked Miss Wanda what she actually said. And basically, Miss Wanda said, I said that, um, I said basically what Martel said on his interview with Dr. Heavenly. I just basically repeated it. And it wasn't toward the baby. It was toward her. Martel got on Dr. Heavenly saying that, you know, whatever he's saying, question the paternity of uh, Sugar Mama. And that's what I repeated it. Carlos asked uh, Martel if he ever questioned the paternity of Sugar Mama. And of course he said no, but you a damn lie. You a lie. You, you questioned the paternity when you said Mel was down there at the hotel on her knees. And I don't mean praying. Stop it. Listen, when Mel and Martel get into it, they drag each other down through the mud and the dirt and then get mad when somebody repeats the things they said. And instead of putting the onus on themselves for bringing this stuff out, they turn around and flip it on the other people for repeating it as if they the ones who are just trying to talk crazy about you. I don't believe in this instance. In this one. Because when Miss Wanda, when you were talking about them churn hell, you was out of line and you was wrong for that. Though that was directly about the kids. But I don't believe in this instance it was to slight Sugar Mama. I know y'all said that she put the picture side by side of some man or whatever the case may be. I still believe it was shade towards Mel, not towards Sugar Mama. Maurice, not Maurice, Marceau even jumped up and said he feel the same way. Um, he don't feel like Miss Wanda, although it was wrong. No, let me say this. Two things can, can, can exist at, one, at two times. No, two things. Two things could exist at the same time. Let me just say that. Two things can exist at the very same time. Miss Wanda can be wrong for saying anything or making mention of Mel's child, right? Right? But it could also be a fact that Mel is deflecting off of the fact that Miss Wanda was saying that she's a horror, right? And that she was putting it all on the child to deflect. Two things can exist at the same time. I think because maybe Ms. Wanda said, I'm, I apologize, but, you know, no, normally when you say but, you just cancel everything out prior to but. Maybe she should have said, I apologize and. But I'm going to say it for you. Ms. Wanda was wrong for bringing up Sugar Mama in trying to shave Mel. And Martell has brought out these things about uh, Mel that we all have seen other people use for shade. And... Mel is trying to make it seem like Miss Wanda is attacking Sugar Mama in this instance when that's just not the case. That's just what it is. And the Mel stands will never, they will never say that. They would never say that. They will always say 100%, you know, because they trauma bind. They trauma bind. Mel, Mel stands trauma bind with her. So they would never give, say, you know what, I, maybe she wasn't talking about the baby. They just automatically gung ho. And also too, because they don't like Miss Wanda and for very good reasons. I understand that. I find Miss Wanda to be a key. But I get why people don't like her. Um, They automatically, it's just automatically Miss Wanda wrong. And like Mel does nothing. I did not like the fact that um Carlos sat there and was like, listen, children are off limits. When I pulled um Marceau's son to the side, you know, I apologize for that, you know, and I don't think that, you know, children should be brought up in discussion. He's basically going at uh, Miss Wanda and Tisha because Tisha said the butt. And, you know, he feels like it's just not being reciprocated on the other end. And he's going at Tisha and Tisha's trying to explain what I just said, that two things can exist at the same time. Marceau jumps in and says, Mel don't take accountability for nothing. Well, if that ain't the pot calling the kettle. 
when you gonna take responsibility for uh saying you was with Chris Fletcher all day when we come to find out your ass was only with Chris Fletcher for about an hour and a half, maybe two. None of them take accountability. Although it was a good point, I just would have rather heard it from somebody else. Period. Maurice jumps in and was like, look, man, look. I just feel like Miss Wanda wasn't coming from the place that they're trying to say it was. Um, Carlos flips it on Maurice and say, well, no, that's not the case because when Tiffany was around there saying, uh, Monster was vaping, y'all went in full action. I'm with Maurice. That is not the same. That does not involve Maurice and Kimmy. You said something directly about uh, monster vaping, that is you talking about a child. That is clear definition of talking about a child. Not doggone saying find your baby daddy. That is not clear definition of talking about a child. That involves a child, yes, but it's not a straight dig at the child. Period. But Mar Carlos over there trying to take up a male talking about I don't think nobody on this stage is taking accountability for you know the fact that you know, Miss Wanda brought up the child. Kimmy said, hold up, who's everybody? He said, everybody on the stage. And she was like, let me say my piece. I feel like Miss Wanda was wrong. Miss Wanda shouldn't have brought up the child. Like, she basically was corroborating what everybody say. And I understand Kimmy's point of view, too. Miss Wanda was wrong. But again, two things can exist at the same damn time. They were both wrong. I don't like the fact that Kimmy tried to flip this on Miss Wanda and say, now you're talking about my child and putting on the heart strings of her fans, her stands. You know what I'm saying? Same thing Karen did on Real Housewives of Potomac with Sharice. Sharice was getting at you for not being a so-called friend that she claims she don't want. And then you tried to flip it and say, you're not going to talk about my mama. Y'all too emotional. Y'all got to be strong. Y'all got to be strong. Let me tell you something. Ain't a bitch or a nigga. A nigga bitch or a bitch nigga could say nothing about my child to get me all up in arms. I'm sorry. Especially if you don't know me, girl. You could drag, 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 drag. And guess what? I don't play the online games. You're not about to even get me online to go back and forth with your fat. You don't know me and you don't know her. Y'all got to be strong now. Y'all got to be strong. But anyway, yeah, you did deflect and try to make it seem like the girl was talking about your, the lady was talking about your dog on own. Your baby, when it wasn't even like that. She was talking about you finding your baby daddy because Martell said it. And she said, I got it from him. Of course, Martell don't remember shit. But anyway, um, he asked Mel what she's thinking and she's sitting in her glory. I think you're doing a great job. You're hitting some really great points. You're doing a great job. And I'm just sitting here going, ah. Martel jumps in talking about he ain't making no points because um why he ain't do this for my kids before when she was talking about their help. Carlos King was like, well, did you call me or send me an email? Why should I have to? How would I know about it if you don't tell me until we start until we watch the film? And then furthermore, you call me and email my ass about other things. Why you ain't email me about that? Martel, sit, sit your milk dud Eminem with no, no peanut head ass down. Sit down. You keep bringing up the hair stuff. Now that you can hang Miss Wanda out the drive for. That right there, when y'all got into it with Miss Wanda about her saying that about y'all kids' hair, I'm 100% on board. I went, let's gather the city and hang her at the state. Burn her at the cross. I'm with you on that. But not this here. Not this here. Let's move on. So they're back and forth arguing about this girl not taking no damn accountability. And Tisha was like, tells Mel, girl, look. Because Mel was like, they, they just talk about me all the time. And Tisha was like, girl, you have no storyline without me. You literally bring me up. You invited my cousin on the show to talk about me. Remember Mel said on the last uh, episode that she don't invite people on to be messy, that that be the producers? Well, we just found out you invite you, you asked Kiki to come on there to talk about Tisha. I got to call a spade a spade. You literally do live and die your storyline behind Tisha and Marceau. And I'm going to tell you why, and I've said it before. I believe you do that because you feel some type of way that your marriage is ended. You know that Marceau and Maurice is cheaters, but the fact that their marriages are still intact, this my feelings, this how I feel, I don't care, fight your mom. But you feel like because their marriages are still intact, although they've suffered and gone through the same things you have, which is infidelity, you hate that. You hate it, you hate it, you hate it. You've been hating it ever since the beginning. And I think what eggs it on for you even more is because Tisha walk around like her marriage is perfect and her man ain't cheating. When we all know Marceau ain't to be trusted. Don't trust him far as I can throw him. And I ain't never played baseball as no pitcher. You get it? That's what this is all about. You hate the fact 
that Tisha sits up there in all her stupidity and say, it don't matter what's happening, I'm sticking by my man. You hate that. You hate that they have the marriage that you thought you had. That's just what it is. But listen, none of them have a real marriage. They all fight y'all moms. You think Tisha and Marceau is happy? You're a damn fool. You think Kimmy and Maurice is fully happy? You're another fool. It just is what the hell it is. The only difference is you decided to be the woman in the situation and be an adult and make a conscious, smart decision to say, I cannot stay with a man who had another baby on me. Very smart to do. I'm here for it, as you should. But now you can't look back at these other couples and know that they have dysfunction in theirs and be mad because they decided to just keep theirs going. Girl, let it go, girl. Find you another man. You set up there all snooty. Like... Like, you just had better places to be and bigger people to be around. Girl, go. Go lay. Go. I didn't like Mel for this. I'm sorry. I didn't. Anyway, um, Maurice, I'm saying it was like, you know, after Kimmy went through what she went through, I really am, am sad to see that we were holding on to these petty things. Martel even had to say, I'm with you on that. Because that is true. Life is too short to be holding on to this BS. It just is. Because you don't know when your turn coming. Moving on, Destiny and Stormy come out to the stage. Um, Carlos asked Destiny where his Gucci bag at, you know, but they ain't had no beef. But you know, they play that package, Destiny and Stormy. They come out of the package, and Stormy told Mel, um, in the package, I'm sorry, Stormy told Mel, me and Destiny talked. And we got some clarity, but I don't see us as being friends. I just don't see a friendship or nothing like that. Well, come out of the package, she was totally wrong because she actually likes Destiny. Now, I saw somewhere earlier, maybe a few weeks ago, of uh, somebody saying, you know, one of her stands, male stands, saying, oh, Stormy done turned on male. If that was the case, everybody done turned on male, girl. That girl came, like Destiny said, I feel like when I first met Stormy, I liked her because she was pregnant. You know, when she was pregnant or whatever, she was like, but given the person who brought me on, Mel, I couldn't see a way forward with her. You know what I mean? It just, it kind of put a wall there in a the block there. Um, listen, let me say this. Because see, the Mel stands say anybody who do or say anything wrong with Mel is automatically wrong. And oh, they want to tear it down and burn you at the stake. Heifers, I don't give a damn. Mel is not perfect and she ain't God. She might be to you, but she ain't to me. And it makes sense now that Stormy and Destiny have formed a friendship. And guess who's the common denominator in not having a friendship with, not, from what I hear, Stormy, but Destiny for sure. Y'all got to start making this type of stuff make sense. But you know, like they say, the truth ain't the truth no more. The truth is what you can make somebody believe. And stands, it don't take much to make y'all believe. Anyway, so they, we find out that they're actually really good friends. They asked about the fight and why they feel like they had the fight. Uh, Destiny said she just felt like they had that fight because, um, you know, she kept asking them the same question over and over again. But Stormy said, first of all, Stormy, you look the cute girl. But Stormy basically said, um, I like the short hair on you. That was real cute. But Stormy basically said she genuinely wanted to know. And um, Destiny was like, ask your friend. The one you came here with. But she genuinely wanted to know because they had a time period. They had been taping all day. None of the girls were saying nothing. She genuinely just wanted to know what the hell was going on. That's what that was all about. But they cool. But he asked what's the status of their relationship. And they really like each other. And they said Galentine's was just an isolated incident. Now Carlos brings up the fact that people tweeted him saying that Stormy needs to get fired off the show because she ratchet. I ain't going to lie. I'm guilty. I was one of them saying she was ratchet. And now looking looking at it now, I regret that. And I'm woman enough to say I was wrong for saying that. Because like she said, saying I'm ratchet is like saying Destiny's ratchet. And you know, and we as black women always get classified as that. Now, uh the tweet said something about this ain't love and hip hop, this is love and marriage Huntsville. We don't need that uh stormy on the show. It did give me that when it was happening, but looking at you now, Stormy. I, I disagree with that. I, I disagree with that. Now, I haven't gotten too much in your tea, you know, because you was around there making them faces like this. You know what I mean? But uh, I feel like you could be a good addition to the show. And so does Carlos, because even Carlos said, I feel like you are the epitome, epitome of what the show is about. Entrepreneurship. You got your own businesses. You got everything you did on your own. It brought Stormy to tears because Stormy was like, man, look, that's messed up because I worked hard. She said, people talking about I need to be fired and I just came into some money, but I worked hard for everything I have. I believe you 1,000% Stormy. 
I 100% believe you. Um, I don't think that it's right that as viewers and fans, we just jumped to a conclusion and said what we said without getting to know the real you. So as a woman, I will apologize, Stormy. I don't think you ratchet. I think you and Destiny had a moment. Both of y'all from the hood. You from Mississippi. She from Detroit. I'm from New Orleans. And I get it. That's just what it is. You got to be prepared. And you was just prepared. I apologize to you. Now he flips over to Destiny and say, now the other people are tweeting me saying your ass need to be fired because um you don't want to spill no tea. Now I get it. You couldn't spill the tea about your personal life with your ex-husband because Love Arias went down there to the courthouse to the white man and said if they ever said something about me, I need to get X, Y, and Z. So we understand that. But you got a new man now and the people saying, why you want to show up you ain't in love? And look at her. Well, who said I ain't in love? The people. The people say you ain't in love. Duh. I think Marceau said that. The people. The people saying you're not in love. Well, that's not true. I am in love. Well, how would we know that? You only really called the boy on the phone and then when you, when you talked about him, you said he talking about he mad because you don't want you, because you don't want to come up there and cook or whatever. We don't know nothing about you, uh, Destiny. Not the, yeah, Destiny. And the people is saying, and I'm with the people on this. If you ain't going to talk about nothing, you got to go. You, you got to go too. You got to go. You know what I'm saying? And where is the Whitlow's? Where is the goddamn Whitlow's? Maybe they're going to be on the part three. Anyway, so, um, Kimmy basically says that, you know, maybe Destiny is just a private person. But if that's the case, then this is not the platform for her. Because reality shows, you got to dig in the dirt. You got to get dirty, down in the mud. We got to know all your business, all your teeth. That's just what it is. Carlo said, you know, the girls are saying, and he, correct him if he's wrong, that it's difficult to get stuff out of you like you don't bite. And Kimmy was like, yeah, absolutely. Every time I try to get with her, it's extremely difficult, you know, to try to get something out of her or whatever. Carlos also says, the producer says the same thing. It's difficult to work with you. I hate that, the way that's phrased. Like, it, you're difficult to work with because it gives a combative connotation. But I understand what they're trying to say. Uh, Destiny claims that that's not true. She said she done filmed some stuff on the show. It just didn't get to air. And Keisha, Keisha, Tisha doggone corroborated that. Um... Kimmy's whole thing is, listen, girl, you're not giving enough for the producers to use. It, it has happened to us all. Um, Destiny's whole thing is, you know, she's just now starting to pick up the pieces. And Kimmy butted in and was like, girl, are, we've all gone through that. This not just specific to you. And look at Destiny. What I was saying, I'm talking about, you know, for me. And she was like, I get it, but everybody on this panel has gone through that. Like, you got to you gotta pick up the pieces in front of us, in front of the TV, so the people can see is what she's saying. Now, Maurice was like, don't try to come for Kimmy. I don't know if it was Maurice or my soul. And she was like, I'm not coming for Kimmy. And Kimmy said, oh, she not coming for me because she can't. I said, oh, you know, Kimmy done healed. She ready to start booking a bitch, as you should. But Destiny, at the end of the day, if you ain't going to give us no tea, you need to go ahead on exit stage left too. And I know that's my right, but you need to exit stage left. If we don't want to see it, we don't want to hear it, we don't want to find it. If you're not about to give us no, no tea on what's coming up. Now, you say you got some more stuff in store. If we don't see you filming with that man and cooking and y'all getting into it, because we still don't know what happened between you and the areas, we don't want to see it. You got to go home. Y'all drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all thought about this week's episode. I know I'm going to get cussed out, but guess what? I don't care. I said what I said. Y'all not gonna convince me or try to bully me. Go hard the comment. You Mella stands. Go hard. Go hard them. Might respond. Might not. Depends. I'm about to give me a drink. Anyway, please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you all later. Bye, Mr. Carroll. How you give the voodoo dog time to talk? I don't get no fucking time to talk. Who the voodoo doll is? And nigga, you just had up here.